The feeling you get from riding around the map on your horse in Red Dead is an experience you simply can't recreate in any other game. Trotting through towns feels so real with all the life that is around you. The patience of sitting and waiting for your prey after setting down your bait. The adrenaline of being chased by a bloodthirsty mob of angry savages. All of it feels so real. Even the loneliness. Have you ever walked through a graffitied covered abandoned building? It's almost like you can feel the presence of all the souls that used to roam those buildings back when they were in perfect condition. It's a very eerie feeling you get knowing that a very empty, very run-down place used to have so much life to it. From people laughing and people crying, now it's just a distant memory. This same feeling is able to be experienced in Red Dead, but it's almost weirder. When walking through some of the abandoned places in Red Dead, you can almost see a story being told. Sometimes, just by looking around, you can find out exactly what happened there. It can be very shocking when you walk into some houses, but behind all of that, you can find a compelling story just hidden in a house somewhere in the game. While capturing footage for this video, I came across a house that I've never seen before, let alone been in. As I walk in, I see all these organs and bodies, and at first I'm thinking people here were tortured. But then I notice a hole in the floor, and I'm trying to think of why there's smoke coming from the floor. Then I look up and I see a hole in the ceiling. I notice that you can pick something up from the hole in the floor, and it's a meteorite. Just a second ago, I didn't even know this house existed, and now I have discovered just one of the thousands of small stories in the vastness of this world. That's what makes Red Dead great. There are so many stories being told in this giant world. And it makes me wonder what kind of stories are hidden in these small towns and locations you can find in the game. Today we will be going over five abandoned towns in Red Dead Redemption. We will be analyzing the place and theorizing what might have happened that led to its abandonment. Now let's dive deep into these long forgotten places of the West. Limpany. Limpany is a small town you can find just south of Valentine, east of the Downs Ranch. It's a riverside town that looks to have been burned down and seems to have been a rather nice town. There looks to be about 10 buildings in total in this town. Some of these are unidentifiable, so we're just going to go over the ones that can be identified. The first building that catches my eye is the very sizable McCluskey Saloon. This is a big saloon. It's kind of like a mix between Armadillo Saloon and Tumbleweed Saloon. Across from this is what looks like a general store called Brewster's Provisions. There's not much to be seen here on the interior, but behind this store is a body being feasted on by rats and vultures. You don't get anything from looting this body besides low honor, so let's move on. Next we have the Sheriff's Office. This is an interesting building. The Sheriff's Desk is still here, and under the desk is a lockbox. If we open it, we are presented with a gold bar and horse stimulant recipe. Next building is the jail. Now this is where it gets a bit grim. Inside the jail are two corpses and they look like they've been here for quite a while. In case you haven't noticed, this building is made out of brick, while the rest of the buildings are made out of wood, which has been burned. What I suppose happened here is that the town somehow went up into flames and everyone either burned or fled out of there in order to survive. The dark part about this is that since brick can't catch fire, the two prisoners were left to die of dehydration. Limpany is made out of 10 buildings. One saloon, one general store, one sheriff's office, one jailhouse, and six other unidentifiable buildings. Pleasance. This place is probably the most interesting ghost town in Red Dead. There is so much mystery to this place that still no one has been able to figure out. When walking in, you are presented with a sign welcoming you into the town of Pleasance, and the sign says that it was founded in August of 1883. As soon as you enter, you'll instantly see a broken down building to your right. This building doesn't look to be purposefully broken down nor burnt. It just kind of looks unfinished, as if they didn't have time to build it. This will make sense later. Directly next to this building is what looks to be a schoolhouse. There isn't much in this schoolhouse, and it looks like any other schoolhouse from the 1800s, there is a book you can find on the teacher's desk, though. Otis Miller and the Boy from New York. Across from this, there is a church. And since there is a church, we can immediately tell that this is a Christian town. This is where it gets weird, though. 
Next to the church, there's a lot of graves. Some of the names of the graves show that there were families living here. Four members of the Yeatman family, two members of the Hassan family, along with three other people. There was an unenterable house with writing on it, and it reads, Ill with Sin. Along with this, I think it says, Unclear Sinners. And behind the church, there's a small house with a barn that says, Keep Out Plague. It's unclear what happened here, but all of the gravestones have a date in common. And that date is September 17th, 1883. And everyone here was murdered, either from knife wounds or gunshot wounds. This means that the population of the town was murdered within a month of the town being first established. So who did this? And could it have been the night folk? I mean, they're only located across the bridge into the bayou. But if you've been attacked by these people, you know that they don't carry guns. So the question as to what happened here is really up in the air. Pleasance is made up of six buildings, including three houses, one barn, one schoolhouse, and one church. Coulter. This is a settlement most popular in the Red Dead community for being the first camp the gang is set in in game. Apparently this used to be a mining town, but it was abandoned due to the great storm that took place in 1884. There isn't too much to this town, but here's what we can gather. When you first enter the town, you were greeted with a horse stable to the right of you. This is also where Pearson made a cooking station. Across from this is a small cabin which most of the male gang members stayed in. Next to this is what looks to be a fully sized house. In this house, Hosea, Dutch, and Molly could be found staying here during chapter one. Across from this is what looks to be a schoolhouse, and this is where the majority of the gang stayed. The little bed that John stays on when he is injured is still there, along with the chair that Abigail sits in to keep him company. It's almost as if nothing was moved since they left and no one else came through this location. The rest of the town consists of broken down buildings, except for one more building, which looks to be a chapel. Culture is made up of seven buildings, including one house, one schoolhouse, one stable, one cabin, and three broken down houses. Brandy Wine Trading Post. In Brandy Wine Drop, alongside a railroad, there is a small, dilapidated, rundown trading post slash train station. Now, this location doesn't have much substance to it, so this is going to be very quick. The only interesting thing you can find here, besides some consumables, is a Gems of Beauty card. This location is made up of one building, obviously. Ewing Basin. Being west of Mount Hagen, this location is where you have your very first gunfight in Red Dead 2. And of course, this was a gunfight against the O'Driscolls who made this place their hideout. Not too much is known about this place, other than the fact that it used to be an old mining facility, possibly abandoned for the same reason as Coulter, due to the Great Storm. There isn't too much when it comes to the interior of these buildings, other than there is a decent amount of loot. This location is made up of 11 buildings, consisting of 8 small shacks, a water tower, a storage shelter, and another large building. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you like content like this, then make sure you subscribe. I mean, you might as well since you watched it all the way to the end. Seriously, I wanna thank everyone so much for the overwhelming support on our last few videos. Every day we keep growing faster and faster and we literally can't even fathom it. You guys are making our dreams come true and we could never be happier. Thank you so much. At the time of us recording this, we are at 1.6 thousand subscribers, and our last video is about to hit 100,000 views. We are just so grateful for everything, and we have no clue how to repay you other than pumping out more high quality videos like this every week. Anyways, that's all. Thank you, and uh, I hope you have a zonkin' wonkin' day, everyone. That's the way. That's the way